Good afternoon, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And we welcome you to our midday meditation. Today we're in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, 1 through 6. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. And he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him. How did they destroy him? All right. So, again, politics makes strange bedfellows. Um, unfortunately, we don't really, not going to spend the time about the fact that the Pharisees and the Herodians were working together. Um, it's the issue of the man with the withered hand. Jesus has just finished up saying that the Sabbath was made for mankind and and not mankind for the Sabbath. Jesus says, I am the Lord even of the Sabbath. And uh, so here he is on a synagogue on a Sabbath day, and they want to watch whether or not Jesus is going to heal the man, to cure the man. And uh, the ridiculousness of their argument Maybe this is the first Sabbath that this guy and Jesus are both at the synagogue at the same time. But how many other Sabbaths and how many other non-Sabbath days has this guy had a withered hand that the Pharisees and everybody else could do nothing for him and would do nothing for him? And so here's Jesus, and Jesus can do something good to bless and now they're mad at him because he didn't do it on one of the other six days. In John, Jesus says, I do what I see my father do. I speak what my father tells me to speak. I do the works of my father. And they wanted to kill him for it. Was withered hands a, uh, a design of the Garden of Eden, Tyler? No. So the work the Father worked at the beginning of creation, that Jesus is undoing the curse that was brought about because of sin, Satan, and Adam's rebellion, that's the work of the Father, to undo the curse. So Jesus heals this man. But in healing the man, there's always something on the reciprocal side of these, these events. Jesus tells the man what? Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand. A lot of times how faith works is you have the word from God. You take action on the word from God, whether it's speaking it or sowing or watering or whatever. But you still need to take that action movement in order to make that faith effective. Abraham had a promise from God that through him all the nations of the earth would be blessed. Abraham had a promise from God that whoever blessed Abraham would be blessed by God. Whoever cursed Abraham would be cursed by God. God had a promise from Abraham that he would make him a great nation. God had a promise from Abraham that he would give him a son. And here's what God said at the start of that whole promise. Get up from your country and from your kinfolk and start walking to the land that I will show you. He had all the promises. If he would have stayed there and not got up and walked, guess how much he would have received? Three guesses, Tyler. Uh, none. None. Sometimes it literally comes down to stand up and walk. Or, in this man's case, stretch out your hand. Because the hand that was withered, the moment Jesus said, Yeah, I'll cure, cure you. Stretch out your hand. And it says, and his hand was immediately restored, just as whole as the other. What was that man's response of faith? Stretching out his hand. Mm -hmm. The power of his healing was in Jesus' word. His reception of it was the stretching of his hand.
Do you have some other thoughts on this? No, sir. So here's my question, Tyler. Did Jesus do a miracle or did this man receive by faith? Got to receive by faith. He said, but it was still a miracle, brother. It's a miracle in one sense. But the power of God did not become effective for the man until the man took action to receive it by faith. Everything God does for us, the majority of it is useless to us because we never take the action by faith to see it activate in our lives. That's the key here. Anything else? No, sir. Well, I'll invite him back for this evening. Don't, don't forget to come back this evening at 7 o'clock Eastern Time to the Lake Butler Church of Christ in Lake Butler, Florida, where we'll be finishing out our study of the book of James. All right. Till then.